lifting and jacking up your car. Why is it so difficult for the sixth gen and where can you do it safely? These are all the things we're gonna talk about today at the Lethal Garage. What is going on guys? Matt over here with Lethal Garage and today we're gonna talk about jacking and lifting your car, where to put jack stands, where are the best places to do this. The biggest thing I've ever heard or the thing that I'm constantly hearing all the time or actually a lot of you guys have come to my channel for the first time to find my videos is around lifting a sixth generation Camaro, whether it's an LS, an LT, an LT1, an SS, a ZL1, a ZL11 LE, an RS variant, whatever. These cars are not the most friendly at lifting. So they have pinch welts, they have subframe lift points, they have a rear differential brace. There's a lot of things that you can lift and jack your car up from. And I'm gonna talk about the proper ways to lift your car and put it on stands. I'm gonna show you how to quickly lift the rear end of your car and get it on stands. And I'm also just gonna show you some products that I've used over the years that have allowed me to lift the car a lot easier in the garage, at the track, or even on the side of the road. So, so let's get into it. As many of you guys know, the sixth generation Camaro isn't easily liftable. It's got a pinch well to lift from. If you have a long enough low profile jack, you can get under the car and lift from the subframe points. And I'll show you those positions when I get under the car. But the primary way to lift the car will be from the pinch welds. Now the car doesn't come with like a scissor lift or anything like that because typically an SS uh, comes with run flats. And if the other cars, they have those repair a flat kits. And that's how they get away without having to give you a, a jack and stuff like that. No spare tire and all that greatness. So, and there's a couple companies out there that have some spare tire options for us. And I'll talk about that at a later date. But in this instance, it's all about lifting the car up. Now, I have a couple different ways that I lift my car up. And most of the time it's from the pinch weld and it's not directly just jack on pinch weld. But I wanna talk about different types of jacks because that's gonna come in handy. And then also items you need to be able to use a jack without risking or worrying about your pinch weld crumpling on you. Because the worst thing that can happen, and it has happened to me, is you don't line up on the pinch weld right, you start lifting your car, it slips, and your fender, here, your fender right here crumples like an accordion and it's not cool or I know some of you guys even have taken your cars to the dealerships and they've messed up your rocker panels because they don't lift the car from the proper place so let's talk about jacks and then we'll get to lifting the car as many of you guys know or maybe you even own I go to Harbor Freights a lot I like their new style jacks this is a Daytona jack it's a low profile setup and it supports my car. It's not gonna lift a truck, it's a three ton. So it's a decent jack and it has a flat pad, which is great. Now my other jack I have over here, this is your pretty standard run of the bill Pittsburgh uh, jack. It's a heavy duty three ton. It's also a low profile, but it has a little cup in it. So you'll see right there, it's not a complete flat top. There's just a slight cup. And if you guys have the cheap aluminum Pittsburgh ones that are the little small ones that are blue and a raw aluminum color, they have a very deep cup on them and those also play in mind. Now, I do have this big three ton jack that I do use for the truck. It's also a flat top, it's the new Daytona style. I really like it, but let's get down and talk about how I lift the car. So we're gonna get on the floor nice and low. Uh, there's two jack points on your vehicle on each side. There's cutouts on the underneath, and we're gonna look at those here in a second, but there's one about right here, and there's one about right in here. But I'm gonna get under the car, and we're gonna take a look at those, and you'll also see a product that I'm currently using to lift the car, and it's gonna open the door to talk about a few other products that are available. Okay, so I have my camera underneath the car right now, and as you can see right here, you can see a product. This is actually a product made by ZL1 Add-ons. It's their bolt-on lift pad for the sixth generation Camaro and you can see this opening in here. So it runs right across from this point to here. It's in your rocker panel, you'll see it. Obviously I have side skirts, that's why it's black. Yours will be body color. But this is a lift pad that bolts onto my pinch weld and allows me to quickly and easily lift my car from it. Um, ZL1 add-ons also sells a non-pinch-on one. It's called their Jack Mag Pad, 
which I actually used initially, and I have a video about that from long ago, but their jack mag pad just slides up and magnets hold it to the pinch weld, so then you can slide your jack underneath and literally lift it up. And it's the same thing as this pinch on one, but again, it's just removable. So it's a little more expensive because there's a few more parts and you have to use what they call the mag puck. Uh, but I switched over to these ones because I was lifting my car, especially for videos all the time, and it just made it a heck of a lot easier. And there's four of them. Their kits, their lift pad kits come with all four corners, and it's like 80 bucks, and they literally just screw on, and you forget them, and you can see mine has been beaten and loved forever. I mean, this thing's about two and a half years old. It's probably been lifted from hundreds of times. Those marks in it are from the the different jacks that we've used over the years. It's been a really good product. So I'm gonna lift the car from this point and so we have a little bit more room and then I can talk about the other stuff underneath the car. So let's get the car lifted from this point. So now that we have the car off the ground, you can see the, the frame is really stiff and the rear is even off the ground. So you really don't wanna get underneath the car with just a jack floor jack holding the car up and it comes to a jack stand. I always recommend using a floor jack and a jack stand with each other, especially if you're gonna get underneath the car. And some people will go as far as to even throw a wheel underneath the side of their car just in case. I mean, safety is pretty dang important, especially when you're working on cars. So take it to the extremes if you would like, but I feel a jack stand and a jack are plenty. Usually I keep both under the car at all times but that's just how I am. In this instance, we have the floor jack holding the car up right now. We have the jack stand. One thing to caveat with jack stands, you do not use jack stands with any of the products on your pinch welds, uh, unless you have one of those jack stands that have a pinch weld notch in it. That would be the only time I would say to use that, but even then, I would be leery because if your car is lifted at an odd angle, it's just not good. Same with the scissor jack. You don't want to lift a car too high with a scissor jack because you can cause problems. My personal placement for a jack stand, and hopefully you guys can see this. So you can see right here, this is basically what I'm gonna call the subframe of the car. The main portion of the motor mounts and all that stuff all mount to this portion of the vehicle. And so I put my stands right here. And I have the car only so high right now, but as far as this position get that lined up so we have the car currently and because only one side's lifted up the whole car wants to balance on that one point but i now have the floor jack and a jack stand holding the car up and you can still see the rear tires are off the ground the front tires are definitely off the ground and that's a solid point to hold the car from. And we've had my car up on these points forever. You can see my uh, coated headers connecting to <laughs> our stainless works exhaust. It's a really good position. And you can see across the screen on that side, you can see the other lift point on the pinch weld. And you can also see them on the rear. So there's that one and there's that one. I've had them on the car forever. So in regards to lifting the car and putting it on stands, these are the two positions I recommend to do it from. Now, if you want to put a stand on the pinch weld, you can do it on the fronts. There is two different openings. So here's the rear opening and here's the front. If you have one of those stands that has one of those notches for a pinch weld, I would recommend to put it here. And this one's actually bent. I don't remember when I used it last to put a stand there, but I must have done that. So, but there is an opening in the front, which is just behind your front tire in this opening here. But this portion right here is a great place to put a stand on both sides to support the full weight of the vehicle. Now, for the sake of this video, I have jacked up both sides of the vehicle from the ZL1 lift pads, and now I also have the jack stands in position. You can see how both of the stands are under the car, and they are on those subframe positions, and we're good to go. So the car's fully supported in the front. We got two points of contact holding the car up and no risk really of the car falling. Now, a lot of people don't like these style jack stands. Uh, again, it's up to you on what you like and what you trust. I haven't had issues with these and having two points of contact on both sides, I'm not that worried.
Now I do want to highlight when I do lower my car, I do lower it side to side. I don't just drop one side to the other. That's just me always being safe, but I let it down about half, I get the jacks out from underneath the car. I let it down halfway on the other side, then halfway on the other, and then let them touch the ground. And that's that. Now there's two different ways that you can attack the rear of the car. Now one way, is to lift the whole rear in one shot, and apologies, my rear fascia is missing, but makes it a little easier for this video. But what I'll do is I'll get right under the diff brace. And I'll literally lift the car from that location right smack in the middle. So as you can clearly see, I have both sides of the vehicle high enough off the ground to do just about any bit of work, but really it comes down to where you're going to put the jack stands. Now you could lift the car side to side and literally put the jack stands on that diff brace, or you have front cradle brace bolts that tie into a solid position. And uh, I'm going to set the camera down. So you can see the lift pads here where you can lift it from. And a lot of people like to put, sorry, like to put their rear stands right here on the car. So this is a solid connection point right here. So that's a main bolt holding the rear main differential in place. And you can literally set your stands at that point. If you do need to get the car higher, I recommend lifting the car with a floor jack from this position and put your stands where we're where i have the floor jack right now on the diff brace and i'll use two of them and i'll make sure they're as far out to the sides as possible near the exhaust and i'll show you what that looks like right here so as you can see in this situation it brings up a good point i wanted to bring up i have these small pittsburgh three ton jack stands they're just not high enough to reach for how high i'm lifting the car up with the stands so i'm going to use my four ton bigger jack stands to make this method work because it's a really bad idea to have these fully extended. And there we go. We have the floor jacks on both sides with the jack stands on the rear cradle. This car's going nowhere. But there you have it. That is how I jack and lift up the Lethal Camaro. Uh, let me know down in the comments. How have you been doing it? Have you followed the same way? Have you been using jack stands on your pinch welds? That's a no-no. Um, what do you guys think of this method? I think it's the best way. It follows GM's outline on where you should be lifting the car from. Technically, you can lift the car anywhere from the pinch weld, but we try to focus on where GM highlights because those are good pivot points for the weight ratio. Um, you do it anywhere else, the weight ratio could be off and could cause some problems. Now, overall, the products I used here are from ZL1 add-ons. I should caveat, I do work at ZL1 add-ons. So if you guys are interested in lift pads or the jack mag pads, I've posted images here. So here's the jack mag pads and here are the lift pads. They are available. Check them out. Uh, I'll put links down below for them through Amazon. Um, but any comments, questions, concerns, let me know. Uh, yeah, that's how you jack and lift a 6th gen Camaro. Now, one caveat, if you have a 6th gen SS 1LE or a ZL1, any variant, you will have the rear limited slip differential power module, which will be on that diff brace. You have to watch out for that. It's just on the front upper side. So if you have jack stands or a jack, just make sure it's not lifting up on the housing of that limited slip control module thing. I don't know what you want to call that thing, but yeah, it's a, it's a limited slip. So yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for checking out the video. Until next time guys, see you on the road. Yeah.